A lot of you guys have asked about how to learn new content. Because before you start revising, you have to actually understand the concepts. The biggest mistake that students make when learning something is that they skip the understanding phase and jump straight to memorization. And I was guilty of this myself. In my first year of med school, we had to learn about all these bacteria and all these drugs. So what I stupidly did was immediately make flashcards for every single bacteria and every single drug and then I just reviewed the flashcards over and over and over, and I wasted so much time. I was using rote memorization. I was just brute force trying to memorize all these terms randomly. But then I realized my mistake and I had to go back and actually try to understand how different bacteria are categorized because bacteria in this group are usually treated with this type of drug and then bacteria in that group are usually treated with that type of drug. So I'm gonna share with you a method that will guide you on how to build that roadmap. It works in any situation. I've used it in medical school, I've used it in business school, I've used it to learn music, marketing, real estate. It's extremely versatile and I call it the tea tree. So let's back up a bit and look at the big picture. There are two steps to learning. First is understanding, and second is remembering. First, you gotta get the information into your brain, and second, you gotta retrieve that information from your brain when you need it. In, then out. In while you're in lecture, out during the exam, or out in the real world. So when you're learning something, especially if it's for the first time, the easiest way to grasp the concept is to try to relate it to something you already know. This is how you give something meaning, by relating it to some prior knowledge. For example, if I asked you to learn all these terms, it would be difficult if you just went at it randomly. But if you had prior knowledge that, oh, these are fruits and these are meats, you can categorize them and then the learning becomes much easier. When I first saw this thing, I was like, what the hell is that? But then I read that it evolves into Snorlax. So I was like, oh, okay, I know Snorlax. So this thing must be a Pokemon. Probably a bad example. For me, when I study medicine and I learn about a new disease, let's use COVID as an example. It's a new disease that we've all recently learned. The disease becomes much easier to grasp when I can relate it to other similar diseases that I already know. So I think to myself, okay, COVID is an infectious disease, meaning it's contagious and it can be spread between people. There are many categories of infectious diseases. We have bacteria, viruses, parasites, fungi. COVID is a virus, so it would be more like this group here. I'm continuing to categorize COVID in my mind. There are many different kinds of viruses, but COVID is a coronavirus, so it would probably be most like this group here. The more I can relate COVID to other diseases that I already know, the easier it is for me to learn the characteristics of COVID, its symptoms, treatments, and so on. Think about how your brain is wired. It's literally a network of connections and it forms a structure. So the best way to understand something is to build that structure so that you can easily add new information around it. And this is where the tea tree comes in. So we call it a tea tree because all of its parts start with a T. I know, we're super creative. Topic, titles, terms, and tables. To build your tea tree, you start with a topic, which becomes the trunk of the tree. So what do I mean by topic? When you're taking a class, usually each lecture is on a separate topic. When you're reading a textbook, usually each individual chapter covers a different topic. So when I'm learning new content, my goal is to make a separate tree for every topic. Like in medical school, there's the topic of cardiology, there's gastroenterology, there's microbiology, and so on. If I look at the table of contents, each of these have their own chapters and each have their own lectures. So I encourage you that when you're building your trees to study for an exam, you can borrow the outline of the topics from your professor's syllabus or from the textbook. You can copy the exact structure they use. You don't have to reinvent things from scratch. So that was the topics making the trunk of the tree. Next, you add the titles, which will be the branches of the tree. The titles are referring to the different sections within the topic. If you look again at your textbook or your lecture slides, you'll see that titles are what divide the individual sections of the chapter. So if I'm making a tree on the topic of gastro, my branches of gastro would be the individual organs of gastro, which include the esophagus, stomach, pancreas, gallbladder, liver, intestines, and so on. So moving right along, the next part is the terms, which will be the twigs on the branches. If you look again at your chapters and lectures, the terms 
are the bold words, the key terms that you have to know from each section. So if I were to look at the liver branch, the twigs or the terms would be the individual diseases of the liver. You got hepatitis, cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, that sort of stuff. And finally, the last part of the tea tree is the tables, which will make up the leaves of the tree. These are all the nitty gritty little details that you have to memorize. So going again off of our example of gastro here, if I'm using the twig cirrhosis, the tables are the details about cirrhosis that I need to memorize. So some examples, tables can be a list, like a list of causes of cirrhosis. For example, alcoholic cirrhosis, NASH cirrhosis, viral hepatitis, Wilson's disease. Tables can be a process. Like, what are the steps to treating cirrhosis? That's something that I just need to memorize. Tables can be a comparison chart. Like, how is one type of cirrhosis similar or different from another? So up until this point, the topics, titles, terms that make up the tree all the way down to the twigs, you need to understand that by heart. You need to know how each of the terms are related to each other. And if I were to give you a new term, you should be able to tell me which branch it belongs on or tell me that it belongs on an entirely different tree. This is the stuff that you are expected to understand. But when we get to the leaves, the tables, these are the facts that you just gotta memorize. In the real world, this is usually the stuff that you can just look it up if you forget. Any robot can look up medical facts online, but as a doctor, I've trained and studied to understand the structure. That's what matters, and that's what's going to get you paid the big bucks. But when we're in school, a lot of times we're expected to memorize things for the tests. That's just the way it is. It weeds out the people who really want it. So these tables are what you would put on your flashcards for review. But remember not to make the big mistake. You want to understand the big picture structure. You want to understand the trees first before you start making flashcards, before you start trying to memorize details. So keep in mind that the tea tree is just a guide. In this video, I'm talking about medicine, but maybe you're studying something else like computer science or engineering or some other field. You might need more branches or you might even need more layers to categorize everything. So another important thing to understand here is that I'm not saying that you need to sit down and physically pen and paper, draw out a tree with a trunk and branches for every single topic. But if someone were to ask you to draw it out, you should be able to do it. You should understand your topic so well that you can visualize how the tree would look in your mind. For some students, that actually does mean you sit down and draw out your trees to map it out in your mind and solidify it. But for other students, you'll find it helpful to just teach the information to a friend or a study partner or whoever because teaching is easily one of the best ways to solidify a new topic, especially when you have a framework to teach from. We just covered one little portion of the learning process. So let's keep going. Let's cover all these other amazing scientific study methods and you can watch them right here.